Hello, and welcome to the Pittsburgh City Council regular meeting of Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. My name is Louise Chris, and with us today is Nick Miller, our sign language interpreter. The following is a list of legislation to be introduced by Pittsburgh City Council. Councilman Reverend Ricky V. Burgess presents Bill 1787. Resolution further amending Resolution 816 of 2015, effective December 18, 2015, as amended by removing encumbered funds from projects pertaining to closures pursuant to Chapter 218 of the City Code. Bill 1788. Resolution further amending Resolution number 863 of 2018, effective January 1st, 2019, as amended by reappropriating funds closed due to requirements of Chapter 218 of the City Code. Councilwoman Deborah L. Gross presents Bill 1789, resolution authorizing the Office of Management and Budget on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh to submit a filing of proposal for funds with the Department of Community and Economic Development, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, PA, DCED, for the purpose of receiving grant funds that will be used for rapid rehousing, homelessness, services and to thereafter enter into an agreement or agreements with PA DCED to accept any grant funds offered to the city. Councilwoman Darlene M. Harris presents Bill 1790. Resolution further amending resolution 549 of 2012 by transferring $45,109.30 from closed and completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs to new priorities within the district. Bill 1791. Resolution further amending and supplementing Resolution 855 of 2011 by transferring a total of $45,109.30 from completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs to Brighton Heights Citizens Federation Five Points Business District of Observatory Hill and District 1 DPW projects. Councilwoman Teresa Kale Smith presents Bill 1792. Resolution authorizing the transfer of the City of Pittsburgh to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, certain public right of way and temporary construction easement rights on certain property in the fourth ward of the City of Pittsburgh in cooperation with a PennDOT construction project. Councilman Bruce A. Krause presents Bill 1793. Communication from Jennifer Olsinger, Acting Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approval on behalf of the Department of Finance for Brandon Jones, and on the behalf of the Department of Public Works for Carrie Brand per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. This concludes the reading for today, Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. Thank you and have a wonderful day.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of Pittsburgh City Council for today, Tuesday, June 18th, 2019. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess, Mr. Coghill. Here. Ms. Gross. Here. Mrs. Harris. Here. Mr. LaBelle. Here. Mr. O'Connor. Here. Mrs. Kel Smith. Ms. Strasberger. Here. Mr. Krause, President. Here. Seven members present. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May uh, I ask you all to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, and then if you would remain standing for a moment of silence. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Our first order of business is proclamations. We have one to be presented by Councilman O'Connor. Yeah, perfect. Just so you know, we do have a, a guest. Do you want to introduce the guest or the I, council I, president? We could do that. I was going to mention that we would like to welcome back our colleague, Councilwoman Strasberger, uh, uh, back to the chamber. And I believe we do have a special guest if you'd like to take a moment to introduce. I don't want to take away from the proclamation. Um, I'm so happy to be back. It's been a wonderful three months home on parental leave, but. Um, oh, cool. Child care doesn't start for another couple of weeks, so we have him here today. This is Evan Strasberger, and he's about three months old. Okay. Welcome, Councilman. And welcome, yeah. Evan. Thank you, Councilman. Th does Evan get a vote if he will if, we if need it's it. a Talks tie? We yeah. might need him. Okay, all right. Thank you for the Councilwoman. Um, so I want to present this proc. This is actually a great organization that we have in the city of Pittsburgh, especially in my district, um, the Jada House, who does a lot of great work. Um, in the Hazelwood community, and they have a big celebration coming up um, this Saturday. And whereas Jada House is a social ministry of healing established by Terry Shields in 2014 to assist and reflect on social and personal daily issues like spiritual awareness, self-esteem, creative awareness, and family values. And whereas as a nonprofit, faith-based community outreach, Jada House provides teens, juniors, and adults with a safe place to educate each other in believing success is a possibility and that each person has a rightful place in our community. And whereas Jada House originally met in Terry's home, but since its conception has grown large enough to have its own space in the Spartan Center in Hazelwood and sponsors community activities like a toy drive, senior luncheon, which by the way was packed this year, and a backpack collection. Jada House was begun by Terry Shields, a native of Hazelwood, when she recognized the need for a place for people to discuss their personal and spiritual challenge around a meal. And whereas Jada House is a thriving community resource that provides adult night, teen night, Jada House junior nights, distributes of, base, of baked goods from the Gorman Dean, report card incentive programs, and community <coughs> bereavement support. And now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh is hereby recognize and commend Terry Shields for her vision in making Jada House an important community asset and congratulates Jada House for providing invaluable assistance to those who need it, in, in, for those who need it the most. And be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare Saturday June 22nd, 2019, to be Jada House Day in the city of Pittsburgh. May I have a motion and a second, please? So moved. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Corey. Thank you for all the councilors sitting here. Um, I just want to thank everybody or just thank this opportunity to be here today. This vision, I didn't think it was going to explode like it did, but it did. And um, I'm a lady of not many words, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilman. 
Uh, that concludes the, oh no, I apologize. We do have one proclamation to be read into the record. It is Councilwoman Kale Smith. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Kel Smith presents, now therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby celebrate Anna Conlon Lynn on the milestone of her 100th birthday and commend Anna for her commitment to her family and her community and be it further resolved that the Council of the City of Pittsburgh does hereby declare June 11, 2019 to be Anna B. Conlon Lynn Day in the City of Pittsburgh. Thank you, Madam Clerk. May I have a motion and a second, please? I move. Second. And all in favor? I opposed abstentions. Motion passes. Thank you very much. That moves us into public comment. Anyone wishing to speak before City Council, of course, we'll have three minutes in which to do so. I would like to remind everyone here to speak that our rules are clear in stating that comment is limited to matters of concern, official action, or deliberation, which are at this time or could at another time come before this Council. We do not permit profanity. We will maintain order at all times. I ask that you would please begin your comment by providing your name and the neighborhood in which you reside for our public record. The green light will indicate the start of your three minutes. When the yellow light comes on, you'll have one minute to summarize your thoughts. When the red light comes on, your time will have expired. May we have our first speaker, please. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Tom Kelly. I've been a resident of the city for 28 years in the Carrick and Brookline neighborhoods. A year ago, I moved out of the city into Beaver County, but I still own 12 rental properties in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm here to speak in light of the negative incidents of the alligators that were found in the city over the last month. I am a reptile keeper I own the Steel City Reptile Expo, which is a reptile show that takes place in Cannonsburg six times a year. We have attendance of over 10,000 people throughout the year at the Steel City Reptile Expo. Last week I spoke to Mr. Coghill and he invited me to come and introduce myself to you today. Most of what I do is true educational programs with the reptiles. I go to schools, libraries, summer camps, a lot of scouting events. In the month of June alone, I have been, or will be, at the Black Hawk School District, Carnegie Library in the West End, Murraysville Library, Robinson Library, Penn Area Library, Hillel Academy in Squirrel Hill, and doing a Girl Scout program. I do over 100 programs a year. There's a lot of negativity around reptiles and reptile keeping because the general public does not have an understanding of what these animals are and how they can be properly cared for. When I lived in the city, I moved three times. Each time I moved, I made sure my neighbors knew what animals I had and what I did with them because I wanted them to understand the reality of them rather than have their imaginations go to some deep dark place and that's why i'm here today to give you the opportunity to understand the reality of people who keep reptiles and what these animals are as you consider legislating exotic animals or reptiles in the city i don't want your imaginations to take you somewhere unfounded um, you can consider me a, a reptile insider, if you will. I can help you understand how many of these animals are out there, who keeps them, the proper way to keep them, any risks involved in keeping them. Um, I understand that Ms. Harris may be um, looking into some legislation. I would like to make myself available to you and any member for any questions you may have. Additionally, the next Steel City Reptile Expo is Saturday, July 20th in South Point. I have a letter for all of you. I'm inviting you all to attend the Reptile Expo. I will give you and your guests free admission. When you arrive, I will be happy to give you a tour and introduce you to people who breed these reptiles, who sells them, reptile keepers, so you really get a frontline understanding of the situation. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, Tom. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. Okay. And you may leave those documents with Chris. 
May we have our next speaker, please? Hey, David, good morning. Good morning, David Tessitore, Highland Park. Uh, I'm here to give you an update on the situation in Morningside uh, with the transit's uh, bus stop roulette that's been going on and plaguing the residents there for now almost four months. Uh, at the end of last week, the contractor informed me that there were 30 additional homes that had been added at that point uh, to the, the contract originally that they had started under that they now have to go back and continue uh, opening up the street again uh, at various places for those homes and I don't know how long that might uh, be extended that people might be able still to opt in but this is in other words a continuing problem um, and what I, I also uh, noticed is that there is no scheduling of the public hearing that was requested by citizens of Morningside for being held in the evening at Morningside uh, Community Center. Uh, you know, it seems, you know, that was over a week ago. Uh, I think that it was introduced. Uh, it certainly uh, should have been scheduled. I will be out of town the 11th, 12th, and 13th possibly the 10th of July, but 30-day limit would be beyond that, so there's no problem on scheduling. I don't know what's the holdup. Uh, it looks like pushing it off until it's a moot problem so that people won't attend, but I hope that isn't the case. Now, uh, the other thing is that this problem has been easily solvable. There's been finger pointing, and I just met today with a gentleman who I hope to come here tomorrow with to announce that the problem has been solved. But there should have been a liaison from the mayor's office. The problem was delivered there a couple weeks ago on paper. Uh, it's been presented to you. Uh, the Port Authority uh, is dealing with a project that is involving the Water Authority. There's a board member on council that should have been dealing with this as something that has been caused or has been instrumental in, that, in the problem. And it's not that we don't want that work being done plaudits to the person who's done the work to help get that to happen, getting that water replaced is essential. But follow through. It only takes a few phone calls to get to the right people when there's finger pointing, and that has not happened. And so there needs to be better communication. That's what the open government amendment is about, and I know the mayor stuck his foot in, stopped that cold, uh, that's something that we hope to come back to. Maybe we'll have to go to Baltimore first and let them be the first to show how it can be done. We'll be working with county council member, I can't disclose that until it happens, to set up a constituent advisory team for that member. Uh, we hope to see somebody on council doing that too at some point. We've got to get people involved and have more happening. Thank you. David, that is not the case. We're working within a schedule you provided us in trying to meet the criteria required by law. May we have our next speaker, please? Yes, my name is Yvonne F. Brown, and you can say what you want, Mr. President, but you know how you set your appointments. I remember Ms. Harris complaining about you would not set the appointment. Mary Beth said, uh, uh, well, there's two. Remember she went back in the back, Ms. Harris, and came back and was only one. So they do do play little games. And I have to speak to you, Ms. Harris, too, because the eight years that you were council, uh, council president, you remember I put in about five applications for public hearing. I did not have one the eight years that you were here. You remember, because even Tanya Payne, I was campaigning for Tanya Payne. I said, I just, it was April, like the 8th. I said, Tanya, I, I put it in some months. She said, remind her. And I brought it up again. I said, in April, about the 8th, I said, you did not schedule the hearing. Maybe you forgot, but it's for eight years. You know, this council, these are young people. And you need to take and come down here and see what's happening. Because they don't show it on the cameras. They even had where, there's a Les Lutwick, he's a white man, he's a Jew. He spoke before me at city council. 
Now, my husband's not too pleased about me speaking at city council, so he had turned it just as it was. I said, wait a minute, Brownie, I'm getting ready. He said, less is on there before you, so you, you got three minutes. But he turned it, and it was me. They cut Les out. But Les was saying then to get rid of the mayor, Risenthal. He was saying fire him. But in the newspaper that day, someone had said about fire him. But they'll cut, they cut this program. Look, they got a new technology, OK, new technology. But if you got Channel 13 Comcast and HD, two different programs. I was on HD at a friend's house fussing. And he said he wanted to watch the game, so go get the Comcast. And, and, was, and when I went, it was Miss Harris. She was talking about $50,000 for some a youth fund. So they don't show what you think you're seeing. I came down today because of the school board. I was going to speak. Now, this is what this public school board says. 412-529-H-E-L-P. I called. I said, what is this supposed to be, some kind of innovation? You break help. You don't have the numbers. You say that we grandmothers are taking care of our grandchildren. We are the ones. A lot of you that your parents aren't. So why would you put help? Do you understand? You have to figure out what the number. I had a woman, my friend, on her tablet. She has college education. So she gave me the number. She said, H-E-L-P. Now she said, no, wait a minute. Wait, H-E-L-P, let me see. That's four, that's three. What kind of this? This is so we can't speak. Because I was determined that I was going to speak. Thank but you, it Ms. didn't Brown. even have the time. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Brown. May we have our next speaker, please? Hey, good morning, Dr. Miller. <laughs> Dr. Ronald N. Miller, uh, Pittsburgh City, Oakland, and Richmond City in Virginia, um, Global Intelligence Society candidate for President 2020, uh, globalintelligencesociety.org. June 2019 is the GIS-sponsored Asian Intelligence Month, and I'd like to call attention to the Indian-Canadian filmmaker, writer, director, Deepa Mehta. I uh, highly respect her. I think she is a genius, a uh, courageous woman. Uh, for nearly 20 years, she has been producing films about her native India under much pressure and violence especially uh, with respect to her um, film Water, 2005, which has to do with the subordination and subjugation of girls uh, under rigid Hindu uh, guidelines. Um, but I think her masterpiece is Midnight's Children, 2012, um, which has to do with what happened to the children who were caught in the um, the rupture uh, um, after um, independence, India and Pakistan, and so on. Um, I'm really surprised that this council uh, has not called attention to the 4th of June um, of this year, which is the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square incident. Um, where do you stand on this? Uh, where does the mayor stand on this? Um, look at the millions, million at least, over the last couple of days in Hong Kong that are resisting um, the imposition of order from Beijing who want more democracy. I think that in the best sense, that's what this council and what the Office of Mayor should be standing for. It's certainly what I stand for. A concern of this council is the welfare of children, at least formally. Um, but I am reserved about some of the things which I hear from, from you and also from people who do public comment. Like last week, I heard one speaker basically bad-mouthing our young people for being too connected to their devices, like Ms. Gross is right now. Um, you know, those, those things that, that our kids, I have too, Veronica Lynn and Maria Eileen, of whom I am very proud for their own <coughs> achievements, and graduating with honors from Slippery Rock University. Um, they have taught me a lot about how to use those devices usefully. I don't think that focusing on your device in the middle of a council meeting is any different than a kid who is in elementary school uh, who is told by the teacher to disconnect from the device. 
and Ms. Gross right now is still connected to her device. I find this completely irresponsible. May we have our next speaker, please? Seeing no further speakers, we'll proceed to presentation of papers. Our first uh, paper is presented by Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1787, Resolution Further Amending Resolution Number 816, Adopting and Approving <coughs> the 2016 Capital Budget and the 2016 CDBG Grant Program by removing unencumbered funds from projects pending closure pursuant to Chapter 218 of the City Code. Bill number 1788, resolution further amending resolution number 863, uh, adopting and approving the 2019 capital budget and the 2019 capital development block grant program by reappropriating funds closed due to the requirements of Chapter 218 of the City Code. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Coghill, our Chair of Urban Recreation. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Gross, our Chair of Land Use and Economic Development. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number <laughs> 1789, Resolution Authorizing the Office of Management and Budget on behalf of the city to submit a filing of a proposal for funds with the Department of Community and Economic Development, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, for the purpose of receiving grant funded funds that will be used for rapid rehousing services and to thereafter enter into an agreement with PADCED to accept any grant funds offered to the city. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Harris, our Chair of Human Resources. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Harris presents Bill Number 1790, Resolution Further Amending Resolution 549, providing for an agreement for the City Council Neighborhood Needs Program and providing for the payment of the cost thereof by transferring $45,109.30 from closed and completed projects within District 1 Neighborhood Needs to new priorities within the district. Bill number 1791, resolution further amending and supplementing resolution number 855 by transferring a total of $45,109.30 from completed projects within District 1 neighborhood needs to Brighton Heights Citizens Federation, Five Points Business District of Observatory Hill and District 1 DPW projects. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilman Lavelle, our Chair of Public Safety Services. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. And Councilman O'Connor, our Chair of Intergovernmental Affairs. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you. And Councilwoman Kale Smith, our Chair of Public Works Services. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Or Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman. Councilwoman Kale Smith presents Bill Number 1792. Resolution authorizing the transfer by the city to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, certain public right-of-way and temporary construction easement rights on certain property of the fourth ward of the city in cooperation with the PennDOT construction project. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Strasburger, our Chair of Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. We have Councilwoman Kale Smith for Councilwoman Strasburger. No new papers, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. And the Chair does have one communication from uh, the Office of Management and Budget. Council President Krause presents Bill Number 1793, Communication from Jennifer Ozinger, Acting Director of the Office of Management and Budget, submitting acting pay approvals on behalf of the Department of Finance for Brandon Jones and on behalf of the Department of Public Works for Carrie Brand per the acting pay policy revised in June 2018. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'll need a motion to receive and file, please. So moved. Second. In discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed abstentions? Uh, it has passed. Uh, next, under unfinished business, we have several appointments. Uh, interviews have been conducted. Bill number 1625, resolution appointing James Hill to serve as a member of the Historic Review Commission for a term to expire March 31st, 2021. Bill number 1712. Resolution appointing Tracy Baton to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire May 31st, 2023. Bill number 1714, 
resolution appointing Jennifer Pursuti to serve as a member of the Commission mm -hmm. on Human Relations for a term to expire March 31st, 2021. Bill number 1715, resolution appointing Sonia Toller to serve as a member of the Commission on Human Relations for a term to expire May 31st, 2023. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm gonna need a motion to approve and then we'll have discussion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Second, discussion with Councilwoman Gross. Thank you so much. Um, the council members may remember that we've seen the proposed appointment of James Hill to the Historic Review Commission some time ago. It doesn't, um, it looks like it was on April 30th. And so I had asked for a, a legal opinion from the law department. I'm not sure if other members have seen it because I was just, uh, All members have it. Uh, as of this morning, as after, this 10 morning. after 10 a.m. Yeah. So just Great. minutes ago, we received the opinion from the law department about the appointment that we're just now seeing a few minutes later. Um, so I would have preferred some time to process it a little bit. You'll remember that my concern is that while not all commissions clearly state in the ordinance that the members should be citizens, that the Historic Review Commission clearly states that the members should be citizens. Um, and for the, um, for the public's um, benefit, there are only seven appointments to the commission. It's a sever, seven member commission. And I believe that James would make, uh, and who I, I admire and respect um, and enjoy uh, you know, as a city employee spending company with, I think he does a great job. Um, we're always happy to see him. Uh, but the, he would be the fifth employee of the mayor out of a citizen, seven member citizen commission. Um, I might ha not have that correct since I'm just trying to pull this together within minutes on live TV. Um, there may be, I think one of them may be actually an urban redevelopment authority um, employee. So I find that it is against the spirit of the ordinance um, that this is supposed to be the reason we set up these commissions um, and members have suggested names to other commissions. Sometimes commissions are set up by council members. Um, for example, if we'd had the affordable housing task force populated by only employees of the mayor, we might not have gotten as much of a robust um, input, I think, from the people of Pittsburgh. Similarly, the Housing Opportunity Fund Advisory Committee um, is meant to be citizens giving the administration and council a, a wider net of input from all parts of the city and all walks of life in the city. Um, and so I, similarly, that's what I feel like the spirit of this ordinance is, that the, the Historic Review Commission um, is meant to be citizens. Our, uh, the mayor's law department says that, well, they're just gonna, there's, it doesn't define citizen right in the ordinance. It doesn't specifically preclude employees of the mayor. Um, and again, uh, James Hill is not a civil servant. Um, he is a, a, the mayor's assistant, um, directly reporting to the mayor and hired and fired by the mayor um, uh, at the mayor's pleasure. So I feel like this is, you know, a bit too much. And uh, it looks like it, this, since there's nothing specifically in the ordinance that um, avoids them, I'm still not supportive in spirit. I'll be voting no. And I think that we should look uh, more closely at how we um, do the language um, in the legislation around these appointments. Thank, Thank you. For you. Time. Just one brief correction, if I may. The clerk has reminded me the opinion was received on June the 11th and distributed to members. I'm sorry that I didn't see it in my email till now. When you um, contacted me shortly before 10 and told me that you were bringing the appointment back up, um, then I, I you know, contacted my office to look for it. Guilty as charged. I do the same thing. It's It can be a challenge to, to filter through all the emails that we receive. Councilwoman Kill Smith. I just want to thank Councilwoman Gross because I think that she's brought up a really valid point, but I think it's the same point as us having all of our staff on different committees and, and doing different things and the people that we want to appoint. I like to work with the administration. I, I don't think that she's wrong that we shouldn't have such a heavy hand, but if it's my name on the door or you know something I'm responsible for, I want to make sure that there's people I trust on those committees. But I want to 
but James is a citizen. I mean, he is a citizen of, of you know, so you can't say that he's not a citizen. So I don't want it to exclude people, especially of his somebody of his caliber and talent, because he is amazing. We all know he's really amazing when it comes to this this a lot of arenas, but especially this this area. Um, and so I'd, I'd hate to exclude him in any way um, because of that. But I do think it's a conversation that we should be having. Um, you know, when I appoint folks, I try to make sure they're not somebody from our office, except for the ACBO funding. Um, other than that, I try to make sure that um, we're getting a very diverse group of people from across our district with a very diverse group of opinions. Um, not necessarily my opinion, but somebody that I can trust usually, too. Um, and that doesn't always happen either. You know, as soon as you appoint somebody, some, somehow they they go off a different, different, different direction or a different path, um, often, not always. But... Um, I just want to say that I don't, I don't, I don't want to stop this appointee, you know, appointment because I really think that he's going to add a lot of value to this. Um, and I actually think all the appointees that the, that came forward this week today were really some really yeah, impressive names. So I just want to say I'm going to vote in favor, but it's because I believe he is a citizen. He has a right to serve. I think that um, there, we do need to have a conversation about how we are structuring these, these committees and boards and authorities. Thank you. Councilwoman Strasburger, did I see your hand? I wasn't sure. Just wanted to note that it was, so you're not looking by email. We did get it hard copy, not by email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I only know because I was going through all of my papers this morning and I happened to see it in there. So. Great. Uh, uh, Councilwoman Harris? The thing on the side of the yes, I don't know if I'm just being excluded or what. Um, usually. Uh, and especially when I was president, uh, we read all the information and council would send over names to the mayor's office uh, for the mayor to send names back to us. That hasn't happened at all, unless it's only happening with certain council members. Uh, I have yet to be asked about anyone uh, by email, by phone, by speaking to me. So I'm assuming that if there isn't a little click here that the mayor's office is sending over all of the nominees. James Hill, I love him, he's a great kid. Uh, and I know he was taught well. Uh, and, uh, but the thing is, is also the interviews started to be 9.30 in the morning. Well, it depends on who gets here at 9.30 in the morning. Now, uh, the interviews when James Hill was done, I think, were over around 9.35 or 9.38. Last week, we didn't even start interviewing till about 5 or um, 9.30. Did I say 9.38? 9 9.38, 9.35, 9.38. Uh, and uh, last week, we were here on time, and uh, interviews didn't start to approximately 9.52 or 9.53. So if we state that interviews are starting, then, you know, uh, do we wait for certain council members, or do we just proceed? Uh, because that's the way it seems to be. Um, and I don't ever remember uh, doing this or treating any council member differently as is done uh, now. Thank you. And I'll be abstaining. Thank you. Further discussion then on the appointments? Uh, Council, how would you like to proceed? Uh, voice vote, roll call vote. Preference? I wanted to clarify what she said. Roll call? I call them. May we do roll call vote on the appointments, please, Madam Clerk? Reverend Burgess? Aye. Mr. Coghill? Aye. Ms. Gross? No, on Bill 16. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Sorry, no on Bill 1625 and I on all others. Great. Mrs. Harris. I on all bills except for 1625. I'll abstain. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. On Bill 1625, I7, one no, one abstention. All other bills, ayes nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Then the appointments having received the legally required number of votes are finally approved. Our next order of business then is reports of committee for final action. We begin with Councilman Burgess, our Chair of Finance and Law. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Reverend Burgess presents Bill Number 1781, Report of the Committee on Finance and Law for June 12, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1635, Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $7,700 to Davenport and Company LLC for professional consultant services in relation to police arbitration. Bill Number 1636, Resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in the amount of $16,350 to MAS Financial Advisory Services, LLC, for professional consultant services in relation to police arbitration. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I've heard the reading in the title of the bills under our Committee on Finance and Law. Is there further discussion on any of the bills? And seeing none, these bills are now ready for final action. And all in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Cal Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received then the legally required number of votes are finally passed. Our next committee is our Committee on Public Works Services. Our chair is Councilwoman Teresa Kilsmith. Thank you, Mr. President. <coughs> Thank you, Councilwoman. Thank you, Madam Councilwoman Kilsmith presents Bill Number 1782, Report of the Committee on Public Works for June 12, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1730, ordinance amending and supplementing the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances at Title VII, Business Licensing, Chapter 719, by amending the existing language of Section 719.02, and 10, and adding Section 719.04B to better align Petler's license in the Allegheny County Health Department food regulations to add the City of Pittsburgh Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to the Street and Sidewalk Vending Site Designation Committee to add the City of Pittsburgh Department of Permits, Licenses and Inspection as a voting member of the Street and Sidewalk Vending Site Designation Committee. Bill number 1731, Ordinance amending the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances at Title VII Business Licenses, Chapter 719, by amending the existing language of Section 71910 to add approved vending sites to the list of sites approved by council, to delete one vending site from the list of sites approved by council, and to better specify the site's location in the list of sites approved by council. Bill number 1749, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works and the director of Parks and Recreation to execute relevant agreements to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Aging's Senior Community Center grant program to renovate the Greenfield Healthy Active Living Center and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $66,055. Bill number 1750, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works and the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute relevant agreement to re receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Aging Senior Community Center grant program to renovate the Brighton Heights Healthy Active Living Center and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $100,000. Bill number 1751, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Public Works and the director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to execute relevant agreement to receive grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Aging's Senior Community Center grant program to renovate the Homewood Healthy Active Living Center and further providing for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $38,200. Bill number 1752, resolution authorizing the mayor 
and Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure and the Department of Innovation and Performance on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement with Ford Motor Company in order to receive access to the Ford City Insights visualization platform that will further the city's ability to deliver services to residents. Bill number 1753, resolution approving the recommendation of the Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure that Flora Street, Fort Duquesne Boulevard, inbound and outbound, Broad Street, Ansley Street, and R. Moore Street be paved with asphalt accordance with section 41706 of the Code of Ordinances. Bill number 1754, Resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure to apply for grant funding from the Pennsylvania Department of Community Economic Development's Greenways, Trails, and Recreation Program to provide funding for the planning of the Emerson Street multi-module path and plaza. In the event the grant is awarded, this resolution provides for an agreement and expenditures not to exceed $230,000. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading of the title of the bills under a Public Works Services Committee. Is there further discussion on any of the bills? There is, and it begins with Councilwoman Harris. Yes, I had concerns last week um, about uh, no one speaking to council members when uh, streets come up, particularly in their district. I thought after a meeting that someone would have met with me and uh, they didn't. So I'll be abstaining all on, let's see, Bill 1731 and 1730. Also, okay, on the uh, street paving and covering brick and block stone, wood or concrete. You know what, uh, check how long it takes before you have to repair a brick street, a block stone, a wooden street, or a concrete street compared to throwing asphalt over it. It's ridiculous and I thought uh, this council would at least try to keep some of the brick, block stone, uh, wood, and concrete streets. So I'll be voting no on that one. I'll also be abstaining on Bill 1754. The fiscal impact statement indicates different amounts than in the text. The total amount of 287500 the grant amount, 250000 uh, and the city match of 37500 I will be abstaining on that, too. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. Again, thank you. Uh, Councilman Coghill? Yes, uh, no, I just wanted to comment on the administration set forth some issues that the legislation I put forward some time ago were causing them in, in the way of bigger projects and, you know, things that it really wasn't intended for. So I understand their, their uh, adjustments, um, although just be it with a caveat that, you know, any council person that they plan to, say, asphalt a street rather than replace the brick or concrete, that they check with that council person in their district and make sure that they're okay with it. And... Um, but, but yeah, it's uh, still there. It's still the same verbiage, um, you know, and I have no problems with their adjustments. So. Yeah, thanks, Councilman. I, I, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Further I'll discussion, Councilman Gross? I'll also say I, I agree. I mean, this is a, just a constrained set of um, streets, and I, I'm also supportive of the spirit of protecting our, our, our original material streets, and I know that I've um, fought to restore some of the original materials in my district, um, and I will continue to do so, um, but I'm supportive of, of these streets as proposed here. Great, thanks. Okay, then uh, the bills are now ready for final action. 
All in favor of the passage of the bills under our Public Works Services Committee uh, will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. I have no bills except for uh, 1730, uh, 1731, and 1754, I'll abstain, and on 1753, I'll vote no. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kelsmith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. On Bill 1753, ayes 8, 1 no. On Bill 1730, 1731, 1754, ayes 8, 1 abstention. All other bills, ayes 9, no, 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received the legally required number of votes have finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Land Use and Economic Development. Our Chair is Councilwoman Deborah Gross. Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. I can come over if you're playing on your device. Are you playing on your device? Carghill, you were supposed to be given an amendment this morning. Oh, I didn't know I was supposed to present that. So that distracted me. Sorry. I thought they put it forward. Yeah. Councilwoman Gross presents Bill Number 1783. Report of the Committee on Land Use and Economic Development for June 12, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1748, resolution amending resolution number 650 to reallocate funding previously assigned to another agreement and to further authorize the mayor and the director of city planning to enter into an agreement with Studio Byron Hayes for consulting services pertaining to the Sheridan Park Master Plan. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading in the title of this bill under our Land Use and Economic Development Committee. Is there further discussion from any of the members? Okay, seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Cross, President? Aye. Ayes 9, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bills having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. I think we're in a sidebar here. I would be happy to hold the Urban Recreation Committee uh, and take another committee if that's helpful. Okay, happy to do so. Uh, next, we'll take our Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management. Our Chair is Councilwoman Strasberger. Yep. Thank you, Councilwoman. And she's holding the smartest person at the table. <laughs> Councilwoman Strasberger presents Bill Number 1785. Report of the Committee on Innovation, Performance, and Asset Management for June 12, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1755, resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Innovation and Performance to enter into a contract with GBWH Pittsburgh LLC to provide ITIL V4 Foundation to support ongoing development of innovation and performance staff who support critical IT infrastructure for a sum not to exceed $41,600. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading in the title of this bill under our Innovation Performance and Asset Management Committee. Is there further discussion on the bill? Okay, seeing none, the bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill? Aye. Ms. Gross? Aye. Mrs. Harris? Aye. Mr. Lavelle? Aye. Mr. O'Connor? Aye. Mrs. Kelsmith? Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Krause, President? Aye. Ayes 9, no 0. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. Next, we have our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Our Chair is Councilman Corey O'Connor. President? Thank you, Councilman. 
Councilman O'Connor presents Bill Number 1786, Report of the Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs for June 12, 2019, with an affirmative recommendation. Bill Number 1745, Resolution Authorizing the Mayor and the Department of Parks and Recreation to enter on behalf of the city into an agreement with Allegheny County Department of Human Services for the city's operation of its senior community centers. Said agreement shall be for a term to expire one, well, agreement shall be for a term of one year at no cost to the city with compensation to the city not to exceed $794,250. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You have heard the reading of the title of the bill under our Committee on Intergovernmental Affairs. Is there further discussion on the bill? Then seeing none, this bill is now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye when their names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kell Smith? Aye. Ms. Strasberger? Aye. Mr. Krause, present? Aye. Ayes 9, no 0. Uh, the bill, having received the legally required number of votes, is finally passed. Madam Clerk, uh, can you advise me, please, as to what bill uh, we're waiting for the amendment on, which has just arrived? Boy, we're good. 1753? Okay. I I don't have a 1753 man. No, I mean on my. I don't have 1753. Is it possible this is on tomorrow's she standing just has committee? The wrong thing, the wrong thing. So it's not under urban recreation. Okay, so let's take, that's okay. Let's take the urban recreation committee. We'll complete that. We'll go back and uh, we'll waive the rules to make the corrective action necessary to amend 1753. Okay, all right. Okay. Councilman Cockhill presents bill number 1784. Report of the Committee on Urban Recreation for June 12th with an affirmative recommendation. Bill number 1746, resolution authorizing the issuance of a warrant in favor of the Sheraton Hotel Station Square in an amount not to exceed $8,469.78 for the City's Park Senior Program Volunteer Recognition Gala and providing for the payment thereof. Bill number 1747, resolution authorizing the mayor and to the Director of the Department of Parks and Recreation to receive grant funding from the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank Summer Food Service Partner Support Impact Grant to purchase two canopies to be used by the city's mobile food truck and further provi providing for the expenditures not to exceed $600. Bill number 1757, resolution authorizing City Council to name the Learning Center in the Bob O'Connor Golf Course after Arnold Palmer in recognition of his lifetime achievements and influences on the city of Pittsburgh and the first tee of Pittsburgh. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. You've heard the reading and the title of the bills under our Urban Recreation Committee. Is there further discussion on any of the bills? Okay, seeing none then, these bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when their names are called. Could you amend? This is, it's under another committee, Councilwoman. We're gonna go back. Okay. Uh, those uh, bills are now ready for final action. All in favor of the passage of the bills will vote aye when the names are called. Those opposed will vote no. And Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. Aye. You didn't hear me? No, I didn't hear you. Aye. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kell Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes nine, no zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill then having received, bills having received the legally required number of votes is finally passed. Uh, Madam Clerk, help me just to, we're going back to the Public Works Committee. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Kel Smith is the chair. Proper uh, uh, protocol would be for me then to motion to reconsider. Okay, may I have a motion to reconsider bill 1753? Thank Thank you in a second. Uh, who will offer up the amendment then? Is it Councilman Coghill or is it Councilwoman Kell Smith? 
Uh, Councilman Coghill here. Okay. It's his Councilman legislation. Councilman Coghill, will you offer up the amendment on Bill 1753? Yes, Thank you. We need to vote on the, the to motion reconsider. to reconsider. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed abstention, seeing none. We have uh, open to reconsider. Councilman Coghill. Yeah. Motion to amend. <laughs> okay, we have a motion to amend 1753. We have a second. Do we have a discussion on amending Bill 1753 under the Public Work Services Committee? I just want to thank Councilman Coghill for working through the concerns with the administration and putting this bill forward in the first place. Okay. Thank you. Councilwoman? I'm just going to, since I spoke about the last one, so this just the amendment simply defines Clarifying. which section of the streets it, it amends the chart that we have in the text file for 1753 slightly um, and so again these are just in some cases one or two blocks of certain streets where um, the administration is asking council's permission to use asphalt rather than I believe the original concrete on each of these streets um, and so I'm supportive thank you Dave, Dave? No further discussion. There is further discussion with Councilwoman Harris. I believe I voted no on this bill, so Correct. I will be voting no on the amendment. Okay, we took the vote on the amendment. You wish to change your vote to no on the amendment? Okay, yes, I do. Okay, so noted. The Councilwoman does not support the amendment. The we bill didn't is. Vote on the amendment. The bill, as amended, is up for decision. No, no, we voted on reconsider. We did not vote on. Oh, you're that. right. Thank you. Forgive me. We did. You're absolutely I'm right. The first one. So we vote. are amended with a second. We've had discussion. Is there any further discussion? Okay. Seeing none, do you want to do a roll call on the amendment? We can do a voice vote or a roll call. What is your preference? We'll do a voice vote on the amendment to 1753 under Public Works Services Committee. Pardon me? Roll call. Yes, please. Ref On the amendment. Reverend Burgess. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. No. Mr. Lavelle. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Aye. Mrs. Kel Smith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Cross, President. Aye. Ayes eight, nose one. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Bill's amended vote and further discussion on the amended bill. Okay, seeing none. Uh, Wish roll call again on the amended bill, oh, please, on 1753. Yes, please. Roll, roll call on the amended bill, please. We still have to take final action on it. Reverend Burgess. Aye. Mr. Coghill. Aye. Ms. Gross. Aye. Mrs. Harris. No. <coughs> Mr. Laval. Aye. Mr. O'Connor. Mrs. Kelsmith. Aye. Ms. Strasberger. Aye. Mr. Krause, President. Aye. Ayes eight, nose one. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The bill then, having received a legally required number of votes, is finally passed. That takes us into motions and resolutions. I do have several uh, brief meeting announcements uh, this afternoon, beginning at 2 o'clock. The Urban Redevelopment Authority will be holding a briefing with council in the large conference room on the new economic development program. Tomorrow, Wednesday, June 19th, Council will be meeting at 9.30 a.m. for pre-agenda interviews for appointees to the Clean Pittsburgh Commission, the Equal Opportunity Review Commission uh, held here in chamber. The Standing Committee meeting will follow immediately. Also, tomorrow afternoon at 1.30, Council will hold an executive session as it relates to legal matters before the Council. Also, as per the request of our Office of Management and Budget, the Mayor's Office of Management and Budget invites everyone to Potholes and Pierogies, a dinner and a discussion of the 2020 capital budget. These public meetings provide citizens the chance to learn about the budgeting process, to talk with residents about priority projects, to pose questions to a panel from city departments, and to provide valuable feedback for the 2020 capital budget. The second and final meeting will be held this evening on the south side. It is at the Federation of Teachers. Uh, it will begin at, uh, forgive me, I don't have a time. It's 6 o'clock if I'm not mistaken. Can we verify that? I'm not sure why I don't have a time here. Uh, child care and interpretive services are available for those who wish uh, to register uh, and for more information you can go to pittsburghpa.gov 
forward slash OMB forward slash CIP. I will be attending uh, this evening's meeting. Can we, uh, before we sign off, is there a way to find the time, please? Can, find it right now. It's on Facebook. Can you? I, I thought it was 6 p.m. They generally are. I just want to make sure we make that announcement. Rasha just confirmed it's 6 to 8.30, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. at the Federation of Teachers. Thank you, Councilwoman. Federation of Teachers, of course, is located on the south side right by the Giant Eagle. I will be attending. Uh, that takes us, thank you, Madam Clerk, we did get it. Appreciate it. Um, so that takes us into motions and resolutions. I think I saw Councilwoman Harris's hand. Yes, since we wait to the end of the meeting now to uh, call out students that are working in our office. Javon, would you like to stand up? This is Javon Franklin Johnson. Uh, he is a graduate from Perry High School. Uh, he lives also in the district of Brightwood. Uh, he likes to play basketball. Uh, he is an intern for the My Work Intern Program, and uh, he's a great guy. I just met him this morning, and he's anxious to work. So uh, thank you, Javon, and I just wanted uh, Council to uh, be aware, in case you see him, shake his hand. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Anything further from members? Then may I have a motion to uh, approve our minutes and adjourn our meeting? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Aye.